In our last video, we talked about how sound gets from my mouth over here on the left hand side of this tube to your ear on the right hand side. Three, two, one, push. That last ball moves. And there's this squish, move, expand, chain reaction moving at the speed of sound. But it's important to understand again, no tennis ball actually travels from my mouth to your ears because if the room's full of tennis balls, there's no clear path for that to happen. It's a chain reaction. Now what we're interested in understanding is what your ear is actually sensitive to. It turns out that your ear is sensitive to vibration. And as I'm talking, I'm actually creating vibration. And you can convince yourself of that by just taking two fingers, putting it at the base of your throat and humming. Mm. You can feel some vibration. What's going on is my lungs are pushing air up through my larynx. My larynx is a series of muscles that basically are strung taut and vibrate and cause the mmm in my voice. Then as the sound comes out, I use my mouth, my tongue, my lips to make noises like sh, k, f, d, that give me diction. So take the mmm and turn it into actual words. So if I'm actually causing vibration to happen, I'm not just pushing a tennis ball, I'm somehow vibrating a tennis ball. And I have an animation that should make this easier to understand. In this animation, along the bottom, you see my tube of tennis balls. So in this case, I'm using red and blue balls. And you can look at any individual ball. So let's say over here on the left-hand side, this red ball, you can see it going through its squish, move, expand behavior. And this is what I mean by a vibration. So I'm vibrating this ball, which causes the next ball, the blue ball, to vibrate, the next ball to vibrate, and so on down the chain. Again, no tennis ball goes from the left side all the way to the right side, just that chain reaction of squish, move, expand. If I stop the animation for a second, you can see up top I've graphed the air pressure. This is a measure of how much each tennis ball is compressed or expanded. So here, for instance, where the air pressure is high, the tennis ball is squeezed quite a bit. It has a small volume. In the middle here, the tennis ball is sort of at rest. It's neither expanded nor contracted. And here, I've expanded the tennis ball. The air pressure is low. It's almost as if I'm stretching the balloon. So you can see the air pressure varies between high and low. So if I start the animation again, that's this vibration that I'm creating on the left-hand side. It's causing an air pressure variation. And over here, if I have my ear or your microphone, or a microphone, that's what you actually hear. So for instance, right now, the air pressure is high to middle to low to middle to high. It's varying. The particular shape that I'm using is a, a sinusoid. It's a mathematical, mathematically very interesting waveform that will show in the next series of videos how these very simple air pressure variations, these, these sinusoidal waveforms, can be used to cre create all of the sounds that we actually hear. So I hope you can see now that what's going on is I'm squish moving and expanding the first tennis ball, the next tennis ball, and so on down the chain. And I'm actually vibrating that tennis ball back and forth, which causes a chain reaction of vibration all the way to your ears. That's how sound travels. So what we need to do next now is introduce a language for describing vibrations. And the reason we're so interested in doing that is because the rate of vibration has quite a bit to do with how sound waves interact with objects in the everyday world.